Hi there, welcome back. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new project. This is the first video in the restoration series of a Philips Antoinette. It's actually called a Philips Antoinette Transworld Deluxe. The model number is 22RL798. This is the infamous, famous James Bond radio because it appeared in a James Bond movie, so obviously its uh, demand goes up and it has gone up. I've had an, uh, a warning on my uh, on my bidding site, uh, trying to find one for some time, I often get alerted that there's a, a, an item or a particular uh, radio up for sale. But when I go and check, it's one of these and the prices are just beyond what I'm prepared to pay. This one I was lucky. I think somebody or the people who normally bid for them had uh, reached their allotment for the week or the month or whatever. And I got this one. I've always wanted one of these just to really work on a Philips transistor radio. I have I don't recall working on a Philips transistor radio before and I almost dread it because I expect it'll have some of those Philips quirks that we're, we've got quite used to with their tube radios, which just makes it a little bit more challenging and therefore a little bit more fun. I'm thinking maybe this is not going to be a very long series, maybe two, three videos max, but uh, I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to shorten it. I'm going to do whatever needs to be done. So without further ado and without any more yapping, I'm going to get started and I hope you stick around and enjoy the video. So here we have it, the famous Antoinette, Philips Antoinette, the uh, so-called James Bond radio because it appeared in a uh, James Bond movie. It was the villain's radio, I believe. And um, because of that, it's become pretty rare. And when you do find them, price is usually a little bit crazy. So I was fortunate enough to get this one, mostly because of curiosity, because I do have a little bit of an aversion for uh, Philips radios, but I just had to get one. And this one has got the usual long wave, medium wave, four short wave bands, and of course the FM, and it has a pickup input as well. So it's got all the bells and whistles. We've got two dials. The uh, lateral dial is for the AM bands. And then at the top, you've got the FM uh, dial as well. On the left hand side, you've got the uh, tuning for the FM. And on the right hand side, you've got the tuning for the AM bands, as well as an antenna that antennas for those usual car radio antennas. I think they're Motorola. And then at the back, you've got uh, input for nine volts DC. You've got antenna selector, the two antenna switches, normal antenna and dipole. Then you've got a phono in or a auxiliary in and also recorder out. And then of course the headphone jack as well. This thing comes with two antennas and unfortunately one of them has broken and the other one has bent. So that should be fun. Okay, let's have a closer look at this lady, Antoinette. We've got um, fine tuning, low and high settings, treble and bass, volume. There's no switch here because the switch, the off switch is there. I presume everything switches on when you click it. So FM, short wave. What the hell was that? Oh. Must be batteries inside. Ah, I should have checked that first, shouldn't I? There are batteries in there. Does it work? It's on FM. This is strange. The volume's on zero and it's still crackling. Not picking up anything. Let's just give it a bit of antenna. Should be more than enough. Nothing. That's the external antenna switch. Well, it's not picking up anything. But at least it's it's on. Let me put that off for now. So okay, we've got all the selectors here: long wave, medium wave, short wave, four to one FM. Pickup is at the top there. There's the off switch, external antenna. We've got three switches here: AFC. This is a, a light bulb. I think it's battery indicator, which is not doing anything there. That should be an internal lamp. Okay, it's all looking good. Now, this here is a little bit damaged. You can see that 
The brass is gone. It's a little bit chipped off there. Oh, this is loose. Oh no. What is this? You live and learn. This is an antenna. Okay, cool. I presume that's a shortwave antenna. That's quite neat. Hadn't even realized that was there. Okay. Shows you how much I know about this radio. This thing over here is sort of coming loose. So there's some problems with the with the trim. Same applies with the leatherette over here. That's coming loose. I don't actually see anything broken. These things can all be repaired, so it should be fine. Everything at the back looks okay. There it looks okay. There's a little bit of leatherette coming loose there as well. Nothing serious. This, I presume, you unclip. Ah, and it opens. Oh, there are batteries. So we've got our batteries. Four cells over here. Another one there, another one there. Usually one of these is for the uh, for the dial lamps. There's our model number. There's a bit of rust on here. I don't see much damage. Yeah, these are a little bit crummy. A bit of rust, but I don't see any leaking batteries. Again, some more rust over there. There's no leaking battery fluid, which is a good thing. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, these guys have sort of rusted and they put some foam in there to give it some tension. So it's not looking too good, but it's not, it's not corroded. It's just a little bit rusty. Again, a bit more of that trim has sort of gone. That's looking a bit grummy. That there is completely rusted and a bit is broken off there. That one still seems to be intact. There's the leatherette peeling off there that can be glued back. That shouldn't be a problem. Nope, shouldn't be a problem at all. I don't know if you can see it, but the grill at the back's got a little bit of an indentation there and there, but I think that can be straightened out quite easily. But the important thing is it looks quite good from the front. Nothing that a little bit of cleaning won't fix. These are all working. These are all turning. So, okay. What I'm going to do next is get it out of the cabinet and figure out why this thing is not receiving at all. I'll have a look at the uh, service manual. I've got a service manual for this, and I think they actually tell you how to get it out of the cabinet, which helps when you've not done this before. But um, yeah, I think I'm going to go for the usual routine. Make sure the power supply is getting to where it should get and um, probably do a lot of swapping of capacitors in the power supply section. Check the audio section. There's something wrong with this pot because when it's on zero, I'm still getting noise coming out of there. So the pot might be damaged. It's turning, but it could be damaged. So I'll go through the normal checks. Power supply first, audio stage next, and we'll see how this progresses. I'm actually going to record this so that I can remember what I've done and perhaps it'll help you because I try to follow the instructions and they don't quite relate or quite match what I found here. But they tell you to take off the back by removing this decorative screw over here. And then you lift this lid and you remove four screws from here. One, two, three, four. And then this lid comes out and sort of hinges up over the two antennas. And that's perfectly clear and it's the way they describe it in the instructions. Then they tell you that you can remove the battery compartment, which uh, is four screws, or six screws actually, two there, two there, and two here. Now these two are removed, these two are removed, those two are completely solid. But then I read about how to remove the front cover and it doesn't require you to remove the battery compartment. It only requires you to open the back, which is already open. So the first thing they tell you to do is remove these four knobs, which I've done. And then they tell us to remove two screws. And they say that one is over there and the other one is down underneath there. Now, this is where things got a bit strange because it wasn't like that. There was one there, there was one in there, one in there and one in there. So four screws. 
And the way I found out is I actually removed the side plate to see what was holding the front cover on. But I've removed those four screws now and this thing just flips out. Well, if you push it at the back, it should flip out. It was out a moment ago, believe me. This thing hinges up here. There's two hinge points at this end. So this thing just hinges out. Let's see. It's coming. Very gently so you don't bend anything. And there we go. Now when you pull this out, see that? It just flips up and it's hinged and you've got access to the entire front of the radio, which is pretty, pretty nice. I mean, other than instructions that don't quite match, but um, this is this is good. This is this makes all this visible. You've got the PC board there with the uh, power supply and audio. You've got all the RF sections here. There's obviously some more behind this. Now I'm going to be dismantling this a lot more because I want to get to some of those sections that I need to clean up. There's a lot of cleaning up to do. All the switches here need cleaning. I'll probably have to bring this, uh, take this cover off. But once you've got these two out, it's actually quite easy to see what you're doing. I've noticed something. This speaker has seen better days. It's pretty rusted up over here. So obviously some moisture has got in here. There's a lot of rust that's fallen down here. The other thing I can see is that I can get to these two screws and um, probably with some pliers manage to screw them out backwards so that I can get the battery compartment out. But a lot of this is visible. This is fully visible here. So that seems pretty good. Let's see the back again. That board, I can get access to the components from the front, but I can remove the board. There's one, two, I think there's, what is that, four screws. I think that board comes out. It doesn't have to come out completely because a lot of wires in there. But I'll be able to get to all those components that I need to swap over there on the back. That board that we see on the front, I have to remove the battery compartment to get access to it from here. And then this top section here is a lot of mechanics, a lot of uh, metal work. There might be another board here somewhere, but I should be able to get to everything pretty easily. So ultimately, uh, this radio has quite a few pluses to it in terms of, um, you know, dismantling it. It's pretty easy. And access to the components and the board seems to be a lot easier than I expected. Now I've got a suitable reference for when I try to put everything back. <laughs> it's always fun. And uh, I'd already removed the antenna. There's a couple of clamps and spring clips on there. But I just wanted to make this, uh, record this for my reference as well. Okay, time to carry on. I think I got a little carried away. What do you guys think? I started dismantling part of this and it just kept going and going and going. And the reason is I found that um, some of the parts needed some serious cleaning and a few chips needed repairing. So I wanted to take the base off. Obviously I started with the sides. They came off quite easily, just a few screws here and there. Made a careful note of where they came from. And now I've got access to the whole thing which is fantastic. I can clean it properly and I can clean all these parts one at a time. And it really, really needs it. If you look at all that, there'd be no way to get to some of that dirt if I didn't take it out. So I'm happy. This will also make repairing the uh, leatherette on these things a lot easier. And more importantly, I've got full access to the components on this board, which seems to be the one that's going to need most repair. All those capacitors are probably pretty shoddy by now. So I can desolder on this side and remove it from the other side without having to remove this board. And as I mentioned, this section here is mostly hardware. There's an FM front end over here. The rest is pulleys and 
dial cords and tuning condensers and you name it. But it is all fully visible. All these switches can get cleaned properly. Some of them really, really need it. Not so much those up there, but certainly these guys down here. So I've got my work cut out for me. I guess I better get started. All right, we've got some progress. Quite a bit of progress, actually. As you can see, it's back on its stand, back on its base. I don't like having this section just floating around. It can tip over and get some damage. So the first thing I did was I fixed up the base, cleaned it all up. I had a few little plastic bits to glue on here because some of those little pieces that were in the bottom of the, well, of the radio when I took it out were actually broken pieces of uh, plastic. And uh, what did it entail? Well, there was one little piece broken off there where one of the little ball bearings was popping over the top. That's used to allow this thing to rotate freely. This uh, piece was completely broken off and that one was broken off. I managed to put half of that back. Can't find that other piece there, but this one here actually uh, worked well. I got the pieces together and then I ended up filling it with, um, with uh, bicarbonate of soda and super glue and then sanding it to shape it. It makes a very, very good uh, bond and it fills very well and you can sand it. So I think I've got it down to the original shape. And I then just added uh, some paint on here to get the black back. So that's all there. This thing was screwed in. There's one screw here and one on here and one on the back. So this thing is now safe again. I've also cleaned all these switches over here. A lot of contact cleaner in the actual switches over there. And then worked them backwards and forwards multiple times. So those have been cleaned. The actual switches are clean. The uh, mechanism back here has been cleaned and lubricated. So all this is good. All good so far. What else have I done? All the capacitors have been replaced on that board. These are all the electrolytics and I measured them. They're all over the limit. Like this 1000 is close to 2000. So I replaced them all. There are 14 caps here. So that board has now been completely done. It's all nice and neat. Good quality caps in there. Cleaned out all these pots. They're now moving very freely. We'll just see what the sounds uh, what the sounds like when I put this on. And then I found out something pretty interesting. Let me show you. I was setting things up to test for the audio. I was going to fit an, um, or feed a signal into the pickup input at the back, but I decided to give it a try just for luck. And this is what happened. That's our medium wave. It's working perfectly. Short wave. There's our uh, fine tuning down there. So our um, AM, all the AM bands are working. I've tested them, but the FM I select FM, I get bugger all. I've tested it. There's no FM. So all the AM is back, no FM. It sounds pretty good. The reception seems to be pretty sensitive. There is still one problem. I'll show you what it is. Let me get something on here. I've got the audio on. If I pull this out, see that? So this pot is a little bit damaged. The um, pots usually have like a, a spring at the back and I think that's completely worn. So I have to do something about this pot. Now it's easy enough to take out. It's very difficult to replace, find one exactly the same with the same um, shaft and everything else. So it's easier to remove that, desolder it, and then just remove the cap and fix it up inside. It should be quite easy. But the point is this thing is working quite well. To remove the spot, I thought I'd just need to, you know, remove that nut and move it back. But uh, as usual, this is a Phillips and there's a catch. There is no way that that can go all the way back because it hits the back. And then I looked more closely and I realized there's a trick here. 
Phillips has kindly given us a problem and a solution. This hole here, I think, is there for one purpose only, and that is to slide. You, you take the nut off, move it back till that um, thread is behind this plate, and then this fits down that groove and comes down. I may have to remove this guy as well. So now we're back to the usual where you remove these clips. There's one, two, three, four over here. You bend them out carefully so they don't break, and this whole thing should pull apart. Okay, so we'll remove that guy first. Uh, seems to be all loose in here. Did this just come out of some groove? Uh, okay, I can see what's wrong. This has a little ridge over there, a little pin that goes into it like that. And that thing's broken off, so this thing's just floating around. Okay, that's why there's no springiness on this thing. I think I'm going to do what I've done before, which is Got to somehow melt this guy in there. Let's see what I can do. Well, some time and uh, lost footage later. Here's the result. And what I did was, since I lost some of the footage, the battery went dead and it didn't uh, save it. Couldn't go do it again. I actually melted that, um, you know, that, that, that clip. There's a hole there. There was a little pin coming through. That was broken, so what I did is I used an iron with a very fine tip and I pushed it down and it sort of melted up. A little bit like, you know, you can do it to this. It forms a bubble and it works. In fact, if I needed to, I could have melted this particular piece of plastic and created a bit of a pool of plastic, but it wasn't, it wasn't necessary. I've got the result I wanted. It's turning very well. It's no longer clicking backwards and forwards. Now, I'm glad I got this fixed because this is a very special pot. This is a um, 17K plus 5K. So from there to there, it's 17K. From there to there, it's 5K. Or is it the other way around? I'll check now. So basically, you've got 22K from one end to the other. And then the middle one is a normal wiper. Let me see if this is working properly. We'll just put it on here. And on there, we've got 23K. If I go to that intermediate one, we've got 6K, it's supposed to be five, so it's floated a bit. And if I move the wiper, this is not going all the way down. It's got to do with the way that thing was bent, but that's fine, that's low enough. And I go up and it just goes up smoothly all the way to 22, 23K. So this is fine. I'm going to put it back and test it, hopefully, That'll last a long, long time. All right, it's in. Let's give it a try. I've got it on. I've got uh, medium wave on. And listen to this. No more, no more bouncing around. And it does go pretty low in volume, right to the bottom. Not quite to zero because of that 150 ohms that's on there. But pretty good. Brilliant. That is short wave. That is fantastic. Let's try right near the top, higher frequencies. That is short wave one. Uh, short wave one, yeah. Grand automatic citizenship. 
foreign man who married a Nigerian woman. See that? Foreign women who marry Nigerian men are allowed to hold Nigerian passports. This new advertising law cannot prevent these bona fide citizens of Nigeria from being... Okay. I'm really happy with that. I'm really happy with that. So where are we with this? Well, the base has been completely cleaned up. Some of it rebuilt, as I mentioned. This thing's now done. This is not going to come off the base anymore, which is a relief because I don't want this thing to be fragile. Uh, I've got a lot of uh, cleaning up to do on the speaker and the front and everything else. But in here, what we have is we've got all the AM bands working. And they're actually working quite well. I'll be looking at an alignment later, but I do notice that these things are actually matching with the dial. So the RF alignment might be simpler than uh, usual. And I see a lot of uh, IF transformers on here that have still completely sealed in with paint. Maybe nobody's messed there, but I probably do want to do a check just to make sure this thing is perfectly aligned. So AM is working. The audio seems to be pretty good. That pot is fine. All the others have been cleaned. The switches have been cleaned. I've got some work to do up here. Uh, you know, lubricate the pulleys that uh, that hold the dial cords and everything else. But that's all stuff that I need to work on. And the next thing is I need to look at the FM. The FM is worrying me. It's probably just a transistor or something like that that's gone. But anyway, it should be quite easy. I'm going to work on that, but I'll be doing that in the next video. I think this thing may be a two, maybe three parts, but I'm trying to keep it down to two part series because I really want to get this thing done. I really enjoy this one and there are some pretty interesting radios on their way. So that's it for now. I'm going to leave you with the usual. If you liked it, click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz. And if you want to support the channel directly, please do so on Patreon. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.